Hey everybody, it's time to do the Q&A answers and uh, as the sun is out and it's so nice out I thought I'd do it outside so forgive the sunglasses, yes I know they're very Mission Impossible, that's all I could find. Um, I'm just going to get straight into this. William Rayner, can you do a test ride of the MT125 as you did one on the GS XS125? Uh, yes, I do plan to go and take out some more Yamahas, but whether I can take out a 125 is pretty unlikely. Um, basically because 125s aren't done as demo bikes uh, very often. Hazemir is an exception to that rule with a few bikes, but very, very few. I don't know if uh, Yamaha has got any 125s you can take out. But if I can, I will. Wolfie picks. if you can put parts from Derek into Divi, which would you add, and vice versa? So what parts would I switch over? I'd like Derek to have uh, Divi's brakes, and I'd like Divi to have Derek's lightness. Mitch Brokers, could you reinvent the wheel? Yes. Ash Vlogs, how can I make my Lexmoto Diablo Euro 3 go faster? Uh, and how is the clockworks business? Uh, how can you make your Diablo go faster? Um, hills, tailwinds, lose weight. Um, I don't know about engine modifications. You, I don't know. Uh, but if it's Euro 3, it's carved, so I guess maybe a can and a jet kit. Uh, as for the clockworks business, it's going okay. Um, I don't have as much time as I'd like to have to get things done, and that's kind of a problem because that's the thing that makes me the most money. But if I don't do it, uh, sorry, if I if I just do that, then you don't get any of this stuff, and it's like trying to find that balance. That's where the support of you guys who like PayPal really helps out because it basically buys me time away from that to make videos. And I go through quiet spells. You know, I haven't, don't think I've sort of clocking over a week and a bit. Um, but you know, it comes and goes. I've got to make more and there's more selection then I tend to sell a few. Uh, so Laya, what is your spirit animal? And if Crow could ride a motorcycle, what would he ride? What is my spirit animal? A, a whale, large, relatively gentle. I don't want to fuck him off. Um, bit solitary, I'm a bit of a, a, bit of a loner. In, not in a sort of, I'm a loner, I've got no friends, it's more I really just, I enjoy, <laughs> enjoy my own company. <laughs> um, no, I just, I find uh, I'm most peaceful and able to work when I'm in my own presence. Uh, I need my own time. But I also like to spend time with other people, you know, like Reno. But it's good that when she's at work and I'm here working, I get my own quiet time away from everyone. And noisy robins. Uh, and what would he ride? He'd ride an XJ6. Uh, there is a video of a crow riding an XJ6. It's on my channel. Uh, Christian Tilly, any thoughts on the Sausage Fest? Don't know at the moment. Uh, I believe I'm about to be having some discussions possibly about that. Uh, so, as I always say, if there's any information as to it's going to happen, you'll know because I make it so obvious and I don't shut up about it. Paul Council, when making a brew, how long do you leave the tea bag in the cup? I don't drink tea or coffee. This is, I don't, I don't, it's a revelation, I know a lot of people are going to lose their shit and unsubscribe. And I, Over the years, every time this comes up, and I say I don't actually drink tea or coffee, I don't really like hot drinks, people lose their shit. Casey White, take a grom out, question mark. Um, been over this, I'm six foot four, the last grom I sat on, it, the bars hit my knees, I couldn't go around a corner on it. Um, if I can find one that's got raised bars in it, but then it, again, it's like, I don't, um, I don't think there'll be a demo anywhere, I don't think. Uh, and then people say, well, you can ride my Grom, and it's like, yeah, but if I ride your bike, I'm third party only, so if I somehow manage to damage it, I'm responsible. Uh, so that's why I tend not to ride other people's bikes anymore, unless I know them personally. Have you noticed I'm rocking the old style Spice 110 shirt? I have new designs, much nicer than this, much nicer than this. Have a look at the links in the description. Also got keychains and uh, stickers and things. Hint, hint. Mick Fist, when searching for a new helmet, are you bothered about sharp ratings? I used to only want to get five stars, but that meant they were either too pricey or the styles were naff, uh, restricting my choice further. Uh, I just make sure that it's got the approval sticker on it. Um, all these different rating systems are, are, set, are testing things in such different specific ways that it kind of, I don't know what to and not to believe. Everyone's going to have a preference on this. As long as it's got a rating on it, um, and I tend to see what people, you know, I'll, I'll search crashed 
<laughs> that version of that helmet, see how well people sort of thought the helmet did. Jack McGrady, just after I sent you a message on Twitter, lol. Oh, hey bro, I'm getting a 125 on a CBT, hopefully before summer, I'm 17. What's your opinion on the best start of 125? I'm torn between a second-hand road bike like a CBR or a brand new jewel uh, like a Sinus Apache, price range probably anything around 1.5k. Um, I would say go for Lexmoto over Sinus these days because you've got better backup and they just that's a, a lot of people say to me like where do I stand on that now I prefer Lex Motos uh, the Sinuses are still perfectly good but I think that the you know Chinese Motorcycle Parts Online is the same company who produces Lex Moto so um, it's quite handy to have them having being the largest parts supplier connected to the people with your bikes uh, and in my experience the bikes are good but whatever um, as for what you get that's up to you both those bikes will work generally 125s have all got about the same performance roughly um, so it doesn't really matter so much what you get. If you're going to be going on long roads, you might want to get something with more gears. I'm not sure if those 125s have six gears or longer gearing. Um, but uh, basically get whatever you feel is what you want. But the advantage of getting a Supermoto, like a, like a Lexmoto Adrenaline or something like that, is that you can go off-road with it as well. And there is so much fun to be had off-road on 125s. But be aware, you will probably drop it at some point and scuff it up and, you know. Some of the best times I had in a 125 were taking the green only. But generally, up to you. Lawrence McAlf, I think that says. Okay. Sorry if I got that slightly wrong. Uh, what largest constructions do you think you're doing uh, this, along the scale of the Dragonfly? And will you ever give you out your real name? Um, the real name, I, after I had that whole discussion. I made a video talking about the whole real name thing and should I give it away? And some people said you really shouldn't, some people said you shouldn't. I'm aware that some people know it. Um, that's fine, but I think generally I'm not going to go out of my way to put it out there. Um, we'll see what happens. And any thoughts on some larger constructions like the Dragonfly? Um, I'm actually going to have to hold off doing large things, which is a real shame. Um, basically because it takes so much time and trying to sell them is much more difficult than... Um, it's. is much more difficult than <laughs> selling clocks and stuff and the, the sort of time versus the money I get in return. The clocks actually work out to be more um, my bread and butter. And that kind of made me sad because it was like, I can't do this. This is a really crazy thing. It would be great if I could do this and you know sell it each time and make good money on it. But um, I realized, you know, work is work and work tends to be repetitive. So making the clocks, even though it's, it's really, you know, compared to working as a chef, I love doing it. Um, but it is obviously something you do the same process again and again and you improve how you do it. Um, so I would like to make something bigger, but I'm going to have to be at a time that I'm more sustained. Um, or after I've sold a few clocks, I find myself like a week or two that I could be like, I, okay, I could put my time into this. This is the thing as a sort of full-time YouTuber and doing the metalworks as well on the side between the two. Um, I'm not sort of in a happy position that I'm floating along and be like, oh, I can do this and do that. I've got some I'm quite knife edge so I have to earn a certain amount, which means I have to work a certain amount, which means I just have to do, you know, what I do. Jojo Whale? Whaley? Wiley? Uh, would you ever buy an old motorbike to restore? If so, what bike and why? Um, if I had the money to do it and the time, yeah, that'd be fun to do. Probably an old Bonneville, just because... I like them, I really like, and I like the old engine, I haven't tried the new one to be fair so I don't know, but I really like the old one that was in uh, that Bonneville um, Calf Race Right Road, made a video on, and also because it's not covered in fairings which means it's quite simple stuff to work on. Ashley Coulter, what's an old video game or movie you like to go back to to de-stress? De Battlefield Hardline, I'm playing a little bit of it occasionally at the moment, um, I don't know if the players are all now five-year-olds or I've become the best player in the world but yeah it's it's been quite entertaining playing that recently because they just you just can play with people <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm coming out of these games at like 25 30 to 6 at times and it's just like seriously they've got to all be kids Wolfie picks again explain everything you did say ask anything uh, everything can be explained by quarks 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 throw the cheese loving the name i have a question what was it like first time riding a geared bike and how do you 
and how long did it take you to get used to riding them? The first time I rode one was when I was about 12. Uh, it was a, a KX, I think it was like a, it was a, a Kawasaki 80cc or something like that. I think it might have been a KX80, I, don't, I can't really remember, but it was on some fields. Um, I loved it because you didn't have to pedal. Uh, I picked it up pretty quickly. It just came quite naturally to me, really. Um, and it was amazing, I loved it. I do have a video called um, What's It Like to Ride a Motorcycle? Uh, and that kind of explains the feeling of riding bikes and why people enjoy it so much. Uh, read the comments on that one particularly because then you get lots of people's opinions. I don't know if you can hear the foghorns. It's obviously a bit misty over in the sea. Rodney Fisher, my question is, would you ever consider driving a car or van? Uh, I would consider it and not do it. Um, I don't have a need for a van. I, can't, I haven't got space to put one anywhere. I can't afford to run one. I don't really, but I don't like being in cars. I, I just, I'm on bikes, I'm happy on bikes. In any vehicle, generally, I feel all cramped up. You know, my knees are on the dashboard. I can't, I mean, it's just, I'm just not made to go inside cars, generally. There are exceptions that, you know, really tall people can ride cars, uh, drive some cars, but no. I just survive by taking whatever I need to on my bike, and that has been pretty extensive at times. <laughs> Uh, but if it really comes down to it, I've got people I can ask for help. Elliot Woodhouse, what is your opinion on getting an A1 license? Should I wait until you're 19 to get an A2 license uh, to move on to a larger bike size? I kind of covered that uh, in my best end motorcycle CC video, um, or my best motorcycle engine size video. Uh, I don't think the A1's got any reason to exist. It's silly. Unless you're planning on staying on too far forever, I don't see why you'd do it. Just get the A2. AW Groom, do you have your own place or do you live in a shared house? Basically, it's a shared house. Uh, one, two, three, four of us live here and the bills are split that way uh, and it helps all of us live and have a roof over our head and be able to afford to do that because uh, living these days is ridiculously expensive. Um, but this can't last forever, so uh, yeah, I have problems coming up in the distant future. Um, but for now, we can enjoy life and try and build things up. Uh, Peter Robinson, best A2 bike in your opinion, looking at the NC700X when I passed my test, but I'm unsure. That uh, best bikes is just, it's so dependent on what you need for it to do, what your riding style is, how what you want basically um, I don't think there's any bike that's bad uh, it's just some will be better for your uses uh, the NC700 I believe is a very nice bike it's probably a good all-rounder um, just basically get whatever you really like because you're not hunting for more brake horsepower or anything like that because you know you've got a limit on it I suppose that then there is the fact that you're restricting it I assume you have to restrict it being a 700 uh, and then you can later de-restrict it that means if you're planning to upgrade your license it's a, it's a good good thing to do but for some people they want to stick around that mark so they can have something that's like AT friendly so. up to you but uh, melon boy what is your dream bike assuming you haven't already got one how oh, god that's like the, the number one question in all Q&A's and, I, and uh, I've only seen it once in this so what is my dream bike these days um, well this is the thing I literally a while ago I was like well I could sell both my bikes and buy one bike uh, and that would give me a much bigger range of things and much more up-to-date stuff and it's like I don't really want one bike over those two yeah both of them aren't amazing both of them have their flaws but between the two of them I'm so covered in the things that I can do with them um, and I've got the, like the completely practical and the completely impractical but as a dream bike I do still like the uh, the R9T but it is a little bit small um, I really don't know. I couldn't say I've got I've got massive feelings or any one particular thing. I mean, it's like I like street triples too, but I could have got a street. If I sold both of the bikes, I'd get a street triple, an older one. But I'm like, eh, there's one bike I can't go off road with. It. Uh, last gen gamer. Two questions. What's your opinion on Chinese pit bikes or pit bikes in general? What's your opinion on my latest video? Thanks. Uh, my opinion on Chinese pit bikes is they're really really good fun. Um, they're not the best made things are not engineered particularly well uh, in some cases uh, but some of them are really good on the road unless you're just going around town they're not great and the only people I tend to see riding them on the road are Bellhausens and what's my opinion on the latest video it was great or not I, don't, I haven't seen it rock oh of rock jeans 
I'm wearing my blue rock jeans at the moment. Um, you can buy these on therideteam.com uh, and you can get 5% off with extra 5 hyphen spicy 110. Uh, that is got, it gives me a little kickback as well, so it helps me, it helps you. These are really good jeans. Um, I will note the price has gone up very slightly and some people have been like, oh, well, the price has gone up. They're still half the price of some of the big companies and as they've been tested and we've seen, they're just as good, if not better. But for the price, they're really, really good. And I, and I literally I live in mine and they just, they just don't wear. They're really good and comfy. Anyway, how many potatoes can I eat before I die? More than a bushel. Uh, Harry, Sophie, what bike would you recommend for a tall guy? I'm 19 and six foot eight. So you're taller than me, Jesus. Um, basically something that's upright, like a supermoto uh, or an adventure bike, like a GS. Um, I'm assuming you're going to a bigger bike. If you, you can, uh, on 125s, again, supermotos, the upright position means you won't have the problems with height like we do with little sports bikes. Uh, but, uh, well, and then there's things like the Verado or the Verado, or however you pronounce it, that's uh, made by Honda. That's a really big 125. Uh, but yeah, if you're going for, for bigger bikes, um, some sort of adventure bike, I think, would probably be an idea. Try some sports bikes, you might fit on them somehow, but my God, you need like extra knees. Rocket Games, two questions. Would you give up Derek and Divi to get Betty back? And if you like football, are you a Fort Smith or Southampton fan? No, I would not give up Derek and Divi for Betty. Yes, I loved my 125, it was great, but it's, you know, it was a 125. That's a 600 and a 400, and the 400 basically is like she was. Um, so, so no, as sad as it is, I think I can probably get by with those two. <laughs> uh, really not interested in football in the slightest. I wouldn't say I was a Portsmouth or a Southampton fan, though I am from Portsmouth, so I, technically I should say that, but I literally don't care in the slightest. And also, I've bought some rock jeans and a couple of other things, so thanks. My name is Richard. Well, thank you, Richard. Um, I hope you enjoy your jeans. I enjoy mine. Pizza Raptor, I'll ask you the same thing I asked Prem187, how far can you do the splits? Also, I know it's a bit of a tiny bike for you, but any chance of a test ride in the MT-07? Um, I would love to ride an MT-07 uh, if they have a demo available from the place that I can get uh, Yamahas, but unfortunately they haven't had one for a, a long while, and by this point it's kind of old news. Um, but yeah, no, it's something I would like to try out. And how far can I do the splits? Not very far. No. There's going to be injuries. Reno, what is your name? What is your favourite colour? Right, okay, what's my name? Jeff. What is your favourite colour? Dark blue. What is the airspeed velocity of a Reno on her eventual new bike when I eventually upgrade? Um, the airspeed velocity will probably be quite similar to what speed you're going at the time. <laughs> so probably about 150. She's a nutter. Geek Moto 13, boxers or briefs? The world must know, boxers. Derry McGee, um, what originally made you want to ride and what inspired you to ride? Uh, and you love your subscribers, and do you love your subscribers? Of course I love my subscribers, I'm gonna do this without you guys, I'd be completely screwed. It's a bit difficult to make videos for people to watch if no one watches them, and it's very difficult to pay bills if you don't earn any money. <laughs> um, what I'm, I just love, what originally made me want to ride was I just loved bikes when I was a kid. I used to be like, ah, look at that, look, I want to do that one day. And then, you know, the opportunity came to ride bikes off-road and then eventually I didn't want to walk um, to work because I had to get times after buses. So it was like, well, I'll get a bike. Um, now's as good a time as any. And then it went from there. That was like just over 10 years ago now, I think. Uh, Callum Ross Hyde, would you ever consider doing a meet and greet? I love that people ask me this question. Would I ever consider doing a meet and greet? I have done, four, are we on four or five sausage fests at this point? Um, and two meets previously. Yes, I do meet and greets. It's a yearly thing. It's a huge thing. Um, you know, it, the sausage fest last year actually felt a bit funny at times because I met a couple of people who had just come to it not knowing what it was or who I was or anything like that. They're like, well, we don't really know what this is about, but we knew something was going on. So we came down and I was like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> No idea. Joseph Rathbone. Hey, I'd love to start motor vlogging, but I'm shy and sick of getting bullied since I just left school. Did people pick on you when you started? If you're going to come onto YouTube, you're going to get hate. You're going to get people telling you that you're the worst thing that's ever happened to this earth. 
uh, and how you're the most annoying thing on earth. If that's something that you can't deal with, I don't advise you do it. It will probably destroy you. That's the thing that causes most people to quit, in my experience, is just not being able to deal with the hate uh, and not being able to do sometimes with just the sheer stupidity of people. Um, there is something ubiquitous between motor vloggers and it seems to work with scale that the more you get to see people's comments and stuff, if you've judged people in everyday life on that, you just go, oh God, you feel lost in this world. <laughs> but thankfully, it's not the case. That's what you have to keep telling yourself anyway. Um, but generally, I'd just say, just be yourself. No one has to be anything because of other people's opinions. So what, what let them say what they want. A lot of people have said a lot of things about me over the years, but I'm like, eh, eh, I'm still here. Uh, Christian Nelson, why did I start motor vlogging? Um, wanted to start doing some video editing really, and, and I've been watching motor vlogs at the time that I was getting a bike. Was it the time I was getting a bike? It was around that, because no, motor vlogging was so tiny at that point, it was kind of. But generally, it was like, it was more of a progressive thing. I didn't go, oh, well, I'm, I'm going to start motor vlogging. I just, I just sort of wanted to make some videos to try editing them and sort of film being out my bike and. Well, there's the first video, it's like the motorcycle video, it's a start. I didn't know where I was going. Motor vlogging wasn't a developed thing as it was now. It was, you know, you took your own direction very much. It's just weird to think like seven years later that I'm actually doing this as a job now. It's like taken over my life. Uh, it's also kind of amazing that I'm doing this full time considering I have a channel with less than 100,000 subs. I don't think you'll find many people doing that. Uh, and that only is thanks to the support of you guys um, being very smart with spending uh, and just working hard, basically. Of course, a channel like mine, I can't get sponsorship deals or anything like that. You know, like people want me to, you know, like apps and things like that that you see bigger channels do. They're, they're not interested in people like me. Uh, so it's it's not easy to get those, you know, those uh, lumps of cash for advertising. Uh, Zoomies, I'm 14. I would love to get into riding. What would you suggest for a teen trying to get into riding? Also, keep up the amazing content. I live nearby to you, so it's cool seeing you ride past places I go every day. Well, obviously, at 14, you've got two years at least before you can get on the road um, really you should make that three because you want to go for a 125 I've recently done a video on like should you go for a 50 125 I believe you should wait for a 125 it's your best thing to do in my opinion you could probably get into riding somehow before that there are some like off-road places you could you could buy a little uh, 125 or a little you know, a little pit bike or something like that, uh, and you can take these places that are off the road and you can just ride around there and get used to riding a bike so when you come to riding on the road, you know, you're more prepared. That's, that'd be a cool thing to do. Um, but otherwise, you know, I'm afraid you can have a bit of a wait before you can get a bike and just get out there and do it. But yeah, good luck to you. Fireblade Rider, will you ever do a QA and a video? No, stupid idea. Uh, Hyper Gecko, personally I find the UK number plates a bit boring, so my question is if you could how would you change them? Make them a bit smaller for motorcycles legally, you know, because we're not a car. We haven't got the space that a car has and that's the only reason they're so big is because, well, the lettering's that big for a car, so you, you've got to put it on a motorcycle. Oh, well, well, it's that long. Oh, well, then just stack it on top of each other and make it like a barn door size. Otherwise, I don't really care what they look like. TPCB, I think. Uh, have you ever considered taking a license to drive a tank? I have actually, I contacted a company, oh, probably three years ago now, and said, uh, it was one of these experience days, uh, I said, hey, what about I come down, make a video in a tank, I don't need the whole day, you know, I just need, you know, half an hour, an hour to just drive around a little bit, just to get that thumbnail of my helmet inside a tank with a barrel going down the side, it's all, you know, it's all I'm really after, and I'll give you as much promotion as I can, possibly can. Uh, they didn't even get back to me and say no. <laughs> but that place was charging, like, it, the driving experience of driving a tank for the day was like, it was a few hundred quid, and they had a tiny place to drive it around, and I was like, Jesus, expensive. Uh, yeah, I know there's a lot of upkeep these things, but man, that's, you must really want to do that. Um, and then I found out they charge you 15 quid to watch. So say you've paid to, I don't know, let your husband or something or wife go and, you know, write a drive a tank. If you don't want to watch, you've then got to pay 15 quid to stand there and watch them. It's just like, that's completely ridiculous. Uh, Charlie Stone, what is your biggest fear? Running out of money. As much as, you know, this world is not about money, if you don't have it, your world will become about not having it very quickly. Uh, ask any homeless person that. Just being able to continue to support myself and Reno and you know do my part to make sure that I earn enough. But but at the same time, I want to continue trying to sort of follow the things that I want to do. 
you know, you get told all the time to follow your dreams and do what you want to do and just be pig-headed about it and just keep working at it. Um, and you do have to question along the line, it's like, well, when, when has it become a silly idea to continue this? When, when is it, when will it, you know, when's the point of like, no, you really have to just stop doing this now and go and get a normal job? Uh, I don't know, but while I'm still surviving, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. But my goal at the moment is just get myself through to the end of the summer. Really, I really want to enjoy this summer. I'm going to have to do lots of work, but I really want to just enjoy this summer um, after this horrible winter. And, and then we'll reevaluate then, see where we are. Every, you know, six months isn't a huge amount of time. So every six months, and it is at the same time, you know what I mean? So every six months I'm kind of like, can I continue doing this? Yeah, I'll give it another six months. So I said with the metal works, I said, I'm going to try six months and see where it goes. Well, I've been up to about eight months now, so we're, you know, see how the first year goes. I've, when I quit my job, when I didn't have anywhere to go from my job when I was a chef and I just said, do you know what, screw this, I quit. And that was, what, two years ago now? Um, I didn't know if it was going to work out and two years later I'm still here, I'm earning money enough to, you know, still be here. You know, I'm really happy the way things are going, so it's just, you know, keep going, see what happens. But yeah, sorry, it's a bit off the subject, but yeah, my, basically the fear is all this coming crashing down. Uh, Peacekeeper, what is the fastest speed you've ever done on a motorcycle? Be honest. Hypothetically speaking, and if it was, it would probably happened in Mexico, uh, about 140 something, the, uh, the low 140s. I do not do that very often. Some people do, I don't. <laughs> Go away. The anti-social motorist, are traps gay? You've seen the meme. Uh, what's your thoughts on Discord? I really don't know what it is. I've, just recently I keep hearing this thing and I'm like, I don't know, I feel really old. Um, do you game at all? Xbox 360, I'd love to get an Xbox One, but I cannot afford to. Um, I've been waiting for the prices to come down for God knows how long. I mean, the problem is, unless it comes down to about 100 quid, I don't think I'm gonna, but I don't know, I'll get a second hand, I suppose, but yeah. I don't really play a lot because I'm working so much, but then I've actually been, more recently been forcing myself to actually like take some time away from working and, and play games and stuff. So yes, to a point, would like to more. Uh, would like to do streaming and still uh, the live stream stuff. Yeah, the reason that hasn't really happened is because I don't think I've got the equipment to do it. Uh, I've got the internet access in there now, but the only thing I've got is this tablet and I don't think it's gonna hack it because it can hardly hack running itself. So I'm kind of like, uh, at the moment I can't really do that. Plus. It gets complicated when you don't live in a house that you can control people walking in and out. What's your views on London? It's a city. I like the, the I like sort of all the people that are there and the hustle and bustle of it. When I'm there, it's like quite cool to be different. But after about two hours, I want to get out really fast. Uh, and I obviously don't want to take my bike there because you won't have it when you leave. Would you like American style scrapyards in the UK? if Nanny State UK allowed it. Um, American, so I guess you mean open ones that you can just pick at. Uh, we have got those. Uh, I went to one recently. Um, but well, not, not as quite as open and just left as they get in America, but we have some like that. Would you ever do a track day? I would like to at some point. Um, now I've got the XJ6, it's better than Derek. So that's the reason I never did it. Unless it was all supermotos, it would not be much fun on doing like the ARD, the, the local one, because there's a long straight and on every straight I'm going to have people flying past me at like, you know, 130, 140 and I'm going to be doing like 90 flat out. It's, it's, no. But on Divi, it's not really a sports bike, but maybe fun. Have you ever considered asking 44 Teeth to help you with the bike industry? Um, I've known Baron for years, so um, it's not like ask 44 Teeth, thing, but I knew him before 44 Teeth. Uh, I'm not really looking to get into the bike industry anymore. Um, Basically, I did get my head through the door a bit with some places and I didn't like what I saw. Um, and over that time, I also spoke to a few people who were in the know and were like, come on, what's, what's this really like? What's that really like? And I don't like it. Um, and because it's such a close-knit thing in the UK, uh, everyone knows everyone um, and that has its own problems. Uh, I just don't really want to get into that, to be honest with you, uh, anymore. I know it's weird. You know, my way in with this was the fact that I was reviewing bikes and companies want me to review bikes. And so you end up going up the chain, you end up speaking to the sort of the company directly. Um, and then they invite you on, on sort of press launches and stuff like that. And I, I, that's what I, that's what I hunted to happen for years. I wanted them to invite me to things so I could go on them. And because of the time that I'd spent um, 
like working close to the bike industry and talking to people in it. By the time it came that they offered it to me, I was like, I really don't want this. It feels, I, no, I don't want to go to a day that's, you know, it's all corporate and they've got all the, you know, couple of our bikes. You know, th their standpoint is their bike is the best and they're not going to have it any other way. Um, not that they, I'm not saying they're trying to force us or anything, but it, it's quite controlled as in where you can go and what you can do. And, and I don't like it. If I want to review a bike to find out what it's really like, I'm not going to be able to do it on one of those days. It's going to have to just be me and my camera out on the road going wherever I want, you know, going along for a bit, stopping to have something to eat, continue riding just at my own speed, my own time, really sort of having time with that bike and learning the bike. Um, so that's kind of why I don't want to go down that line. Uh, look at what Lamb Chops has done, consider looking into it. As I say, I've had the opportunities there, I chose not to go down that line, I didn't want to do it. Um, I say for Lamb Chops, he has got a very, very good knowledge of, of bikes, sports bikes and things going back over the years, I believe, from what I can tell from talking to him, uh, which is not something I have uh, necessarily. I know, you know, I know things, but I don't know about all the ins and the outs of it. And to, to be someone who's at that level of of writing stuff, for instance, um, you really have to have the knowledge to back up, like to, to make your point more valid, because it'll only be valid if you truly understand the subject. I review bikes in the sense of like, well, my butt is on it and I'm riding it, how do I find it? Um, that isn't enough, I don't think, for sort of the mainstream magazines and stuff. So yeah, I'm very happy to see what's been happening for Lamb Chop, but um, yeah, it's something that basically sort of, I've had the options and, and said no. I've turned down loads of things like that. I even turned down a whole, a whole day in Spain riding bikes around for a week or something. But the thing is, it, when it came down to it, I had to pay for flights and all this stuff. And it's like, I don't have the money to do that because I don't work for a week and I have to spend out all this money. Then you know, it just, it's not possible for someone with my sort of income to do those sorts of things. Oh, this is getting long, isn't it? Um, Halloween, uh, a friend and I had a debate about 50cc bikes. He doesn't think they should be allowed on public roads with a speed limit higher than their intended uh, purpose. For example, he thinks that if it's fine in town centres and cities to cut traffic and congestion, but that could become an obstruction on the roads of 4 to 1 hour plus. I started my life on an Aprilia Sonic scooter and have no issues with them being no faster than roads, motorways included. Any thoughts on this? Um, I have no problems with people using 50ccs on faster roads than they can go um, but the problem is you're going to be running into this one problem which is if you're in a 40 and your bike's only allowed to do 30 uh, you're going to be keeping up traffic and people are going to be overtaking you dangerously all the time you're going to have people tailgating you uh, which is why you tend to see these 50cc peds being forced into the gutter and then they've constantly got cars overtaking them and they're like some second class, second class citizen on the road hold your position let them wait you have a right to be there even if you're going slowly it's safer to do that and let them make the proper overtakes than let them try and overtake you in your own lane by sitting in the gutter. To agree, I think they're better around town. There's no reason you can't use them on other roads, but I wouldn't personally want to do that. That's why I stand by saying that a 125 is the first bike which is actually safe to be used on the UK roads fully. Because, well, you know, if you're on a 50cc ped on a dual carriageway and you're only you're not allowed, hang on, you're at 16, are you allowed on a dual carriageway? Even at 17, say you still had your 50cc ped and you can only do 35, 40 mile an hour and you went onto a 70 mile an hour road where everyone's actually doing 80, your converging speeds are now, you know, even though you're doing 40, you might as well be going zero and they're going 40. Uh, and when they hit you, they're going to kill you. And it has happened to several people. I've made a video about one instant. Um, so, if you're lucky, if you ride safe, if you're in the right areas, uh, I don't reason, I don't think they should be illegal. Uh, I'm not that strong on it, but I don't. I think it's better to go for a 125. Uh, Hippo drones. Do you think if you were US based, being a full time YouTuber would be easier financially than in the UK uh, to make it work? I believe that the US market, you get a better CPM, which is payments uh, per thousand clicks. Um, I know this to be the case because I've compared with people in other countries, um, we get we get very, very low here. Uh, the viewership is a lot higher in America. You know, my viewership is about 70 something percent UK, only about 9% America. Um, and there's such a huge market in America that if you're in America, I think people will be more likely to watch you. Uh, because we're, but then I'm English, so even if I was in America, people would still not like me. Because that's what I've, you know, we've discussed this over the years. What is it that causes for the American audience, there's such a huge audience, to not come over to UK vlogging very often. Uh, and I think it basically comes down to they're just not interested. It's not relevant to them and to some of them they just don't like the English or the English accent. So for the few Americans that do watch these videos, thank you for being the enlightened ones. Connor Hood, you were stranded on a desert island forever. You get a mermaid as company, top half or bottom half, half fish. 
I think you're going to have to say bottom half fish because let's face it, who wants to screw a big fish head? It's, you know, Sirico, what cow is best cow? Number seven cow, if you remember what I'm talking, if you know that reference, that was the best cow. Uh, King Kitchener, where does morality stem from? Is it something that we pick up from our families, friends and or teachers or is it something that lies with, uh, in, innate within us? I believe it's, you were saying basically the nurture or nature thing. I think it's very, very much nurture. Um, you know, you, in the same way that you can get you can get a stuffed bull terrier as a classic example. Could be the friendliest, calmest, nicest, loveliest dog you've ever met. You abuse it and cause it to become an angry dog, it will become an extremely angry, dangerous dog. Um, I'm not calling Staffies dangerous dogs, I'm just using this because that's the classic example people use. But you all know that some Staffies are the soppiest things ever. Um, you, because this is basically the question is, are some, are some people innately assholes? Um, and I don't think that people are innately assholes, I think it is learnt. Um, sometimes by their own opinion, um, ego growing and stuff like that. You know, it can happen with some people that become famous through YouTube. I've always tried to stay just me. I think it just comes down to the, you know, as I say, are, are some people innately bad people? And no, I don't believe that is. I think it's all nurture pretty much. Unless they have a mental illness, in which case then it's more nature. Okay, I'm going to make this the last question. I'm sorry if yours didn't get answered. I have over 250. What am I supposed to do? But mate, you know, they're all going to complain this is too long, so... There's one from Jake the Garden Snake himself, so let's answer that. Uh, how do you feel about companies offering a few free products for thousands of dollars worth of advertising exposure should they support the people who support them? Um, of course I strongly agree with this, but you know, I know, for instance, there is um, a company that I did work with that I got an item off them that was worth a couple of hundred pounds, um, and in three months I helped 10,000 pounds worth of sales happen. Um, and when I said, hey, well, how about we work together on this? You know, we'll continue doing what we're doing and we'll split some revenue on this so we can, you know, I can earn a bit as well on return. And they stopped talking to me and stopped feeling them. They didn't even take my phone calls or anything. Um, if a company offers me a product I particularly want, or if I go to a company and say, hi, I'd like that product, and all I want is the product, then I'm happy to make a video in return for that one thing because it's, it's valuable to me because I was going to go and spend that money. You know, the retail value is the value of the item. Very often these companies will offer you something uh, and say it was give you the like say oh it's the retail value of it is what it's worth to you and it's like no it's it's what it costs you it's worth to me because I'm not buying I don't want to buy this. So in that sort of a circumstance, when you really want the product, I don't mind doing advertising just for the thing. Um, but if I had a much, much bigger channel, you know, like yours, Jake, I'd definitely be wanting to be paid because it's only fair to the person, you know, to like Jake or any other big motor vlogger or any big YouTuber out there, if they're helping promote someone else's product and they can earn some money from it to help support the thing that they do, because particularly because this platform doesn't support its creators, that is really important. Um, where it it all falls apart is where the companies undervalue us. There is a company out there of course who lent very heavily on the motor vloggers um, and as things grew you know the odd free helmet there may have been oh I'm not giving it away I'm talking about the odd free helmet here and there you know it was okay but when you've got a channel as big as some of these guys that doth not butter many parsnips as they would say uh, and it would only be fair that they could possibly get paid some money as well considering the company's making a lot of money it would be good that that was shared with the people allowing them to make that money. Uh, and as things have grown, that's become more important to larger, larger channels because they need the support. Uh, however, they don't wish to do that and they do keep trying to prod at people, it seems. Um, I don't know what their PR is doing. It feels almost like suicide for a PR, which is a shame because I actually do like the products. But it's, uh, yeah, I'm not directly involved in all this because, you know, I, I don't have a huge channel, but I do have a broken helmet and nice to get a new one but I don't think that's going to happen. So yeah I believe that YouTube should be able to earn money by working with people. It, all of these you know these relationships should be fair. Uh, people need to stop working for free preferably um, but you know we can't do it. Until there's like a union uh, it's, it's it's I don't know I don't know how it's going to work out but companies are getting more and more switched on and realizing that they could stop running those magazine ads that haven't been doing them any favors for years and put that money into people supporting them like you know vloggers and stuff who actually like their products genuinely um, and you'd have a far more effective return 
uh, that's the thing I, I never understood. Going back to the previous company that I will not name, the whole thing that they did must have cost way more than sending out half a dozen helmets. For, you know, you spent all this money and did this thing and pissed a load of people off, or you could have sent out that value in helmets and stuff and, and only had good stuff. Sorry, the memory card and the camera just ran out, so I've got the one from the voice recorder, so we're on to one audio just for the end of this video. Yeah, so I don't understand, uh, what was I saying? So yeah, I don't understand why they're smarter. I don't know if that makes sense to what I was saying. But then again, my opinion's a little bit invalid because I've never actually been paid to do something. Um, it's always been through like discount codes and stuff, so basically I'm getting a commission on a sale. They're not just paying me to do something, I'm only getting paid when someone buys something and they make money. So it's a, it's a good, it works out great for everyone, because you know, it means that anyone that buys something using one of my codes, uh, that happens to be one that I get a kickback on, um, they get their sale, the person gets their product a little bit cheaper, and I get a little kickback from it, it works out great for everyone. Um, but I don't get paid directly, because just my channel's too small, people don't pay people like me. <laughs> anyway, I've been waffling on for way too long, but that's an interesting subject that I've kind of wanted to stick my head into, and I've kept it out uh, pretty much, just because, what's the point? Well, there we go. Sorry if I didn't answer your questions, I had so many. Uh, and it's either I ask really short questions, really quickly, and don't really go into the subject at all, in which case then I get loads of comments in return, say, making all sorts of points that I would have said, but I couldn't have, didn't have time to say. But you know what I'm saying. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time. This channel is made possible by the support of the audience. Please check out the links in the description and all the different ways you can help support the channel. Any help is greatly appreciated.